All right, this particular video is for some of my subscribers. I've had several subscribers uh, already get these gauges here. And in the last week, I was contacted by three more new subscribers who purchased the field piece S-Man 480V. And they were asking me some questions. And so I'm gonna, if you don't wanna go look and hunt through all my videos, I'm gonna show you one little item to do when you get your brand new gauges. Actually, one of them is I have a disassembly video, but I would not attempt a disassembly of video on putting silicone grease on the O-rings unless you were really confident about it. Um, so here we go. We have the S-Men 480, and I have it in the vacuum micron mode and, and doing a vacuum on it, so it was pressure. So the first thing you want to do before even engaging your your fittings and your service adapters into the system they're still I had still have them open or you know unlocked they're not depressing the valve core so right now I'm only drawing a vacuum in the hoses only through the manifold so this reading that you see right here 94 microns is coming from my vacuum pump and what I'm doing here is only testing the capability of my vacuum pump my hoses my fittings anything to make sure that all the way up to this point that there's nothing linking from here on anything there so if I'm able to get under 100 microns usually you'll get there within 30 seconds um, unless you have sometimes when you have a brand new set of uh, gauges the hoses they're new but they might have been on somebody's shelf for six months or a year before they actually got put into use so the actual you have to understand this the actual rubber on a brand new set of hoses might have moisture absorbed into it so you might not get under 100 microns for a few minutes uh, depending on the capability of your vacuum pump now if you want to eliminate the hoses as a problem you can close down your valves and then see and you see it just jumped down it went down to 71 because I just eliminated any possible moisture contamination that are just in these rubber hoses by closing these two valves I am now only drawing a vacuum inside the aluminum part right here through this, this is a three quarter inch silicone hose. You draw deeper vacuums in the silicone hose than you can these hoses. So now it's only reading here. And if I leave it on another five or 10 minutes, this will go down below 30 microns. If I leave it on overnight, uh, it'll get down below 10. So, but that's overnight running all night long. So now you have your brand new gauges set up. You have, you're pulling your vacuum through your vacuum pump, through your hose, through the manifold. These are closed off. Now I'm gonna reopen these two. So I just opened that and you've seen it jump up there for a second and it'll come back down. And I'll open this other one and it'll jump up. Little moisture bleeding out while I had it close out. There is actually moisture in the hoses or refrigerant actually from my last job and it's still seeping through the pores of the rubber and so it jumps the vacuum up a little bit because now it's above 100 it was 90 something so now i already had it on the vacuum in the system for a few minutes before i decided to make this for the last couple of viewers who have just purchased this manifold so they could get some understanding of what's going to go on as you see it's slowly going down so now and you could go back and look at some of my videos. I explain more in different videos. It's all, my information is spread out a little bits and pieces between different videos. Now I will turn the depressor to go to the system. Let me get over so we can focus back there. Let me see if I can focus both of them. There we go. So you see it's down to 96 microns. Once this opens the depressor to the system, the vacuum will release a little because of moisture, a little bit of air refrigerant in the system but it's already down in a really low micron, so there. Now that's open. See it jump up? I was already below the 1,000 uh, micron level. 
and you see it instantly going back down and it's jumping up and down up and down so let me uh, do now I'm gonna open up the high side so that's depressed now this will jump up and down as refrigerant actually boils and pops and bubbles out of the oil throughout the system because this is an old used system this was just in a collision so they had it open to the atmosphere and the refrigerant oil is contaminated with moisture so you won't get a steady downward decay of, of vacuum a pull down you'll see these little pops and you'll see these little jumps where it goes back up and it comes back down it goes back up and it comes back this is like when you're frying with grease and you put some chicken or vegetables and some oil and all of a sudden it just explodes and splatters as the water is turning into steam because the oil is hotter than 212 degrees so the water instantly vaporizes into a steam the exact same thing is happening here the refrigerant trapped in the oil and the moisture trapped in the oil as you lower the pressure on it go into a vacuum it gets to a point where it'll boil it'll pop it'll explode and expand into a steam and the raising number is that moisture being drawn off so i have one video maybe more than i have more than one video going back a month or maybe more where i was showing the blue vac micron gauge hooked up to a big commercial system and i was leaving it on overnight and you can actually see it start one day go all overnight and you see the vacuum going down you see it popping up and going down popping up going down and every time it goes up and down it kept getting smaller and smaller tapering out down to a pretty steady level at a really low like 10 microns or so so if you really want to see what it looks like when it operates overnight on like a spreadsheet on a data logger overnight go back and look for that video I was doing a commercial unit and you can see using a blue vac micron gauge what you're going to see and the blue vac micron software let me get out of here i'll go into that so these are all my wireless sensors and so like turn on a wireless sensor here i'm going to turn on this wireless sensor that's the i have the blue indicator right there that means it's on the cold suction line i'm going to turn on this wireless sensor okay that's one on that's on the liquid line high side then here the air going into the air filter going through the crowd i'll turn this one on and i'm there's an opening going ah, bang it right way back there so now i'm i'm inside the opening where the air gets sucked down right on top of the filter and the fan located deep down inside there so that bluetooth sensor is on so now for recording the evaporator outlet temperature so that will be the evaporator inlet temperature this will be the evaporator outlet temperature so now you see them flash up on here it picked them up and uh, I'll say okay and so it's now giving me the temperature of here's the supply 69.2 68.5 inside that's the live readings Bluetooth that's constantly being broadcasted the temperatures here are from these two lines right here they're on the line and they're both nearly identical temperatures right there so that's those so right now we have both valves are open high side and low side and we're down to 370 but that is with the vacuum pump running and I'm actually drawing a vacuum. You see it just popped up. And that was an explosion of refrigerant or moisture out of the oil. It just popped, exploded into steam. So it rose the pressure a little bit. And that's why that number goes up. And then it'll decay again. But you they get a better understanding and actually seeing it on a data log over time graph. Go look for my video where I was explaining the blue vac micron gauge. And maybe I'll do one of those because one of my customers not customer one of my subscribers who just bought this also told me he's buying the blue vac micron gauge and so 
Maybe I'll remake a video just for him, a recent one on hooking it up on a car and I'll release another video using the Blueback Micron gauge on a vehicle and showing you how to use the software and data logging it. So that's it for now. Uh, this one's uh, ready to go. I'm gonna be charging it up now and I was doing some nitrogen flushing, uh, purging three, three times. I did a vacuum down below 500. Then I hit it up to zero PSI, one PSI with ni uh, nitrogen sucked it out the other side and it's kind of like a blow through system flushing out the system because these lines were left to the open it took uh, like three or four weeks and they didn't seal the lines feel sorry for the customer but that's what is what it is um, all right see you guys later field piece s man 480 v if you're an automotive business and you're anywhere even thinking of nearing being serious and accurate about your business and doing air conditioning and you want to learn more this is the system this is the setup to go bar none this is the easiest best setup to go for an automotive guy to get see you guys